Welcome back to another iDoctor UK video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the front screen on the Samsung A23, model number A236, so it's the 5G version. It doesn't show any display on the screen, but it is actually on. I think it's going to call the emergency services now. Anyway, to start this repair, we need to get the back cover nice and hot because that needs to be removed. I'll use a heat gun for this and I'll go for about five minutes just getting it nice and hot. You can use a hairdryer or a heat gun to get the same effect or even a heat mat if you've got one. Once you've suitably heated the back cover, we're gonna take a razor blade and create a small gap between the mid frame bezel, which is the bit on the side and this plastic back cover. And that's gonna cut through the adhesive quite nicely so that we can add some isopropyl alcohol under there and then make the gap large enough to fit in the plastic guitar pick, just like that. We can remove the razor blade now and then begin running the guitar pick along the edges of the phone to start releasing it from that chassis. The great thing about these is they are plastic and you're not gonna break it using a plastic tool. There is a risk that you might bend it a little bit and, and fold it out of shape, but generally these are quite easy to remove. Just work your way around with the pick. Be careful on the edges not to insert it too far. Anyway, just take your time. Make sure you get it right. And you don't do any damage to this back cover. Yeah. That was pretty easy to remove. We'll get rid of this leftover adhesive right now and put the cover to one side for later on when we're reinstalling. Moving on now, there are nine screws up the top area of the phone here holding down the mid-frame bezel. As always with Samsung screws, these are, they never seem to stick to my screwdriver, even though it's magnetic. So what we'll do, we'll just loosen them all the way and then come back at them with some tweezers to grab them out of there. now with the tweezers just pulling them out one by one once you've got those first nine out of the top area of the phone we're going to move down to the bottom now where there's another seven crosshead screws that need to be removed go ahead and get them out of the way and store them safely for later. Just a little tip, all these screws are the same size, so it doesn't matter if you muddle them up. Just stick them in a pile and just make sure that they all go back at the end when we put it back together. Same again with these screws, we'll pick them out again with the tweezers because they never ever seem to stick to my screwdriver. Now that the screws are removed, the back cover's removed, we need to remove the SIM tray just down here. And then this is gonna act as our spot that we need to use to remove the mid-frame bezel. If you look when I touch it with the pick, it's a lot more flexible than the rest of the bezel. And that acts as a little weak spot so that we can get the plastic pick in and then begin separating the bezel from the chassis of the phone. It can be a bit awkward when, you get in, when you're working around the corners. So just, you have to be a little bit rough with it. Just be careful when you get to the fingerprint because the flex cable's just there. You don't want to go too deep with the plastic pick and end up cutting through that because that would be another part that you need to replace. Now that that's removed, we need to disconnect that fingerprint um, sensor and button sensor. Just use the plastic pick to remove that and that's the mid-frame bezel removed. Moving on now, we need to disconnect the battery to isolate power from the device. Disconnect this sub to main flex here. I always leave these two coaxial cables attached on all Samsungs that we do. It's just much easier to reinstall it later, but there is a screw below the bottom camera. Remove that screw and store that one separate to the screws that you removed for the mid-frame cover because that obviously has a different place to go. Once you've done that, the logic board should be quite easy to remove, just like that. Leave the front camera attached, it doesn't matter. 
and then put that down to, just to one side next to the phone. That leads us to the bottom of the device now. Disconnect this flex cable here. And then there's one more of those black crosshead screws holding down the subboard at the bottom. Remove that and store it safely. And then that will allow us to remove this subboard. It is a little bit stuck down, but nothing that a little pull doesn't sort out. So the board's removed, the subboard's removed. The next thing that we need to do is to soak the underside of the battery in some isopropyl alcohol. So run a bead of alcohol all around the four edges of the battery. And then we're gonna leave that a good five minutes so that it soaks in and softens the adhesive up so that we can pull it out easily. We can remove this thing here. This is the vibration motor. And there is a little spot just on the back edge here where we can gently pry underneath it and not cause any damage to these two pins on the other side of it. Pry it up and pop it out. This one's come with the adhesive still attached, so we can just stick that straight back into our new chassis. That should have allowed enough time now for the alcohol to soak in underneath the battery. I'm gonna add a suction cup onto it and then begin lifting away from the chassis. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't always come first time and you might have to leave it another five minutes or so. But if you give it a wiggle, the battery will start to come and you don't need any prying tools to remove it. With the battery removed, the, the final thing that we need to remove from this old chassis is the ear speaker. And that's the same as the vibration motor. There's a little spot just here underneath the bottom pin that we can get the tweezers underneath and gently pry it upwards. Once everything's out of this chassis now, we can put it to one side for recycling. And then we're gonna get our new part, which is a genuine Samsung service pack. As always, I will try and remember to leave a link in the description below. As always, it's a genuine Samsung service pack and I will try my best to remember to put the link in the description below. I've just noticed as well that this does actually come with the ear speaker attached. So just check that yours does. If it's like mine and it's from the link in the description, then it should have one already attached. I'm just used to them not having them on there. Now we're gonna begin repopulating our new chassis, starting off reinstalling the battery, making sure that's stuck down correctly. Then we'll go for the vibration motor, followed by lining up the subboard and reconnecting the screen flex cable just here. There's that single crosshead screw that goes in just here I'll peel back this little bit of plastic tape, the plastic tape just there as well, and reinstall the logic board into place. Make sure the front camera goes in, reconnect this sub to main flex cable, that little black screw just there. Make sure that it's sat flush and flat and then moving around to these coaxial cables. That. Make sure they don't get twisted and squeezed or nipped because if it, if it gets damaged you might find that there's no signal on the phone. We're going to reconnect the battery now followed by the mid-frame bezel which will squeeze into place. and clip in all the way around. Make sure that it snaps on. Now we've got that little flex cable that needs reattaching just here. I use the tweezers just to apply some pressure on the back. Don't forget your SIM tray, get that back in place. And now it's time to reinstall all those crosshead screws that hold down that mid-frame bezel. If you like repair content just like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're trying this repair for yourself, I really wanna know how you get on, so let me know in the comments below. If you've got any questions to ask about repair, then do the same, ask me in the comments below.
Now that all the screws are resecured, I'll just give it one last final check to make sure that they've not missed any, which it all looks good from here. But I have noticed that there's a significant buildup of dust right in the edge of this mid frame. So I'm just gonna go along it with this cleaning brush and make sure that it's nice and clean because that can affect the back cover sticking down well. The best way that I've found to resecure this back cover is to use five millimeter Tessa tape. And it's a very similar adhesive to the adhesive that's used originally on these. So peel off any remaining adhesive from the back cover and that mid frame. And then we'll begin preparing it with some tape. You might turn your nose up at tape, but I find it's much better than using things like T7000 or B7000 that you might see other people use in other videos but everybody has their own way of doing things. And this is mine. The biggest benefit for me is that it sticks instantly. It sticks solid and there's no need to clamp it. Like when you use B7000, you have to stick it in the clamps for an hour or so. Whereas using tape, there's no need to clamp it or anything like that. It's ready straight away to give back to your customer. Five mil Tessa tape and lay them right up to the edge of the chassis of the phone. Apply a little bit of pressure to make sure they stuck down good. And then use a spudger in the corner to get it into the groove of the corner. Followed by a razor blade in there to cut it to shape. Make sure it wraps around that shape and then cut it off, cut off the excess with your razor blade. Repeat it on the other side and then cut round the shape. If you've got a little bit left over like that, just give it a rub and it should come away. Finally, you've just got the top and bottom edge to do. Cut it as tight as you can to the other tape that you've got on there. But just remember that this device doesn't have an IP rating. It's not a water resistant one. Just use tweezers to peel back the backing sheet on there. Carefully line up the back cover pressure to make sure that it's stuck down good. As you can see there's no overspill of glue to clean up doing it this way and it's literally ready to go back power on the device now and that just about completes the repair. Thank you for watching and see you next time.